zoning appeals. All commissioners are present, so we do have a quorum. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from the 17 October meeting. Everyone has had a chance to read that. Any comments, questions, or a motion to accept? Sir, I make a motion to accept Second. the minutes as Second. written right. or as printed. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 No old business, new business. 2022-30, 200 South Broadway Street. Hold a public hearing for uh, wherein the applicant is requesting a variance from Section 5.02 of the Adopted Development Regulations to allow a reduction in required off-street parking. Staff report, yep. please. So before we start, I wanted to introduce Bethany Falvey. She is our new city planner, and so she is going to be handling both of these items tonight. Oh. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so the applicant, Flatland Realty, is requesting a variance from the uh, Section 5.02 of the Development Regulations to allow a reduction in required off-street parking for the retail business located at 200 South Broadway Street. There is no on-site parking available, um, and the parking is zoned GBD General Business District and is within the Central Business District overlay. It's surrounded by a mix of uses, including Dairy Queen to the north, a, very, a vacant lot to the east, and Wizard of Faux restaurant to the south. The property is located directly west of Central Business District. Um, parking for retail uses is required at a rate of one per 200 square feet of space accessible to the public. The applicant has indicated that there will be 1,300 square feet of public space in the building, resulting in a requirement for seven parking spaces. Um, the development regulations do allow for required off-street parking to be reduced by up to 50% for on-street parking within um, 500 feet. There is ample on-street parking within <coughs> 500 feet of this site um, to accommodate the parking needs generated by Flatland Vape 2 including eight angled parking spaces on Delaware Street to the north. After um, the required notices were sent out, we had one inquiry um, asking if um, what the use for the outbuilding um, on this map, uh, address 202 South Broadway. Um, at this time, we don't know the use, and it's not part of this case. Is it not still part of the same lot? It is. It's owned by the same owner? Yes. Okay. Okay. Any questions of the staff? I have one or two. Sure. <laughs> um, I assume that the previous, previous owner occupant uh, did not have a problem Does, like this one. Was there a code change? Or is this because it changed uses? It's because it changed uses. Um, and we looked on the aerials back to the early 2000s. It's been angled parking there on Delaware Street. Do you happen to know if those were painted by the, or approved by the uh, city engineer or painted by the street department? I'm not sure. Because they don't match anything else that the city has. Okay. So if we went to the point of, of approval, approval with exceptions or with comments, if I wanted to make a comment about that, that's where, at that point where I should mention it? Yes, and we'll okay. um, talk with engineering about it. Okay. All right. Sir, I have one question. Uh, how many parking spaces are on the, the Broadway street side of the business? I don't believe there's any painted. Yeah, there's no um, marked spaces there, but there is parking allowed on Broadway. Yeah, so there, I mean, you, you can see on the aerial, there's a couple places. That it's mainly driveway entrances there along Broadway, so there's no striped parking, but... Um, Parking would be allowed on Broadway where anybody could. So, yeah, so it's, it's not marked as no parking, so I don't believe. No, nope, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, so they can park, folks, folks could park between the 
driveways there hmm. on the street. So two or three or four spaces? Looks like Would you do you two. estimate? Yeah, two. Can't block the sidewalk. Well, yeah, down down to the corner. If, if you're measuring down to the corner, you could probably three. At three. Least. Yes, ma'am. So they they really have to account for four more than that's really what we're looking at isn't it there's also the angle parking here on Delaware right, on Delaware. right. to include those those spaces if they're legal and whether, whether or not the owner occupies just that that little corner of it the owner of the building has has the right to control who parks all the way down the side so customers that come in could have free access to the entire length of his property down that way. For parking, you mean? Yeah, the, I mean, it's the parking's in the public right of way there. That's along Delaware. Yeah. That's in the public yeah. right of way. So that's not controlled by the property owner? No. It, his, he or his tenant will have access to it, though. Because mm -hmm. there's no competition. <laughs> right. Dairy Queen's about the only other business right there. So that angled parking is owned by the city? Yes, it's in the right of way. Okay. Okay. It just doesn't look like it. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look like anything that the city would have painted. I mean, it doesn't look like a street. That's what I'm saying. Right. I think there's a couple of streets around like that where mm -hmm. it, it's the right of way, but it, they don't go through. They just kind of dead end there right. where it doesn't even necessarily look like a street, but it's the right of way. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions of staff? Mm -hmm. And the applicant is here as well. No, sir. Does, does the applicant wish to make any statements? Uh, they come up to the podium. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'll now open the public hearing to anyone who wants to come up and say anything, including the applicant. How are we tonight? Good. I mean, I, hopefully I answered your questions before we got started about um, anything that we had. Um, as far as the angled parking goes, as far as I know, that's been there since the 80s. That's what Tommy Herkins told me when we were discussing the building. He was the last applicant there. So as far as he knows, that parking has been there. As he bought the building, I think, in the 90s. Or he rented that space from the Wilcoxes in the 90s. So he was telling me that parking has always been there. But I agree with you. I don't know who put it there. And I know we have a new public works director too, so. Right, who wasn't here. Who wasn't time. here, so. And rules change. Yeah, Just so pu public wanted, works may not to, even know. Wanted to yeah. make sure that public works got a chance to comment on it as well. And they haven't had a chance to see this and they didn't have any comments. Okay. Right. And the reason I applied for the variance is you mentioned this gravel lot back here. Um, it's my understanding that had to be paved. If you have off-street parking, it has to be it, paved. It would be on-site parking. Mm -hmm. No, I, I said off-street. So yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But on-site, it would have to be a paved parking lot. Correct. And that that would bankrupt me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But I was, prior to the meeting, I was asking the question, if additional businesses you were able to rent in that space, or if this one could grow... You still have an option to satisfy the problem without yes. having to go further down the street for additional parking. Honestly, this business has actually been shrinking, which is why I'm moving it um, to try to keep it open. Um, the rest of the building is is literally just my warehouse yeah. for storage. But well, we, we can hope <laughs> for you. <laughs> we can hope. This yes, this is like a hail mary to try to save this from. Um, it is no secret Leavenworth is not booming like it was a couple of years ago. So I'm trying, I want to keep the business here, but I if I can't get this and move it here, then I'm going to have to take it somewhere that it can, you know, succeed. 
Um, but our, ever since like 2018, our sales have like cut in half till now. So we're just trying, I'm, I'm just trying to keep it in Leavenworth. Okay. Any questions? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Anyone else like to speak? Please. Good evening, I'm Wendy Scheidt, the Main Street Director. Um, I've worked with Eric quite a bit. Um, I hope you've driven by this space because um, it was on the market for quite a while. It's in the flood zone. Um, it's significantly been improved with beautiful paint, um, sidewalks, and um, I feel like our downtown benefits for this from this area. I realize across the street is Central Business District, General Business District, but in lieu of the parking spaces on Broadway and all the ones on the north side, it appears that there's plenty of parking to me. Um, we appreciate the buildings that are being purchased and renovated in downtown, so it's not just a big parking lot. That's not what we need downtown. And I think Eric has been very diligent in uh, bringing this building back to life. He'll have a retail component and um, that only helps the business downtown. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Anyone else like to speak? Okay. I'll close the public hearing then and open it up for discussion amongst the commissioners. I have one follow-up question. So if you're able to reduce the uh, on-site parking by 50%, so then technically is the variance to reduce the parking by I mean, so 50% would be three and a half, so I'm assuming you'd go to three instead of seven. Oh, you reduce it by three, so it would be a variance for four on-site spaces? The Are variance you, would be for no um, required parking. You don't specify the number. You just say no on-site par parking. But you're correct in the numbers, and yes, yeah. since we can reduce it with on-street parking by up to 50%, uh -huh. And so the angled parking spaces are on street parking since right. they're in the right of way. So that we could automatically reduce the requirement by 50%. So it's, re it's just four spaces since you can't be half a space. And so the whole building, is the whole building addressed at uh, 200 South Broadway? Yes. So if the variance is for zero off, uh, on site parking, then that applies to the entire building? Yes. So then that goes back to what you were saying, where we could put a condition if they had something else to come in that required more than seven. Tenant. Uh -huh. yeah, if there was an additional tenant uh -huh. to move in, um, you could require that it would come Resubmit. back to, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Seeing none. All right. A request for a variance may be granted. Yeah, I did. I didn't hear. I'm sorry. Oh. Got to check it. I'll close it again. Good. <laughs> a request for a variance may be granted upon a finding of the board that all of the following conditions have been met. The first one, the board shall make a determination on each condition and finding be entered into record. That the variance request, well, this is the second. That the variance requested arises from such condition which is unique to the property in question and is not ordinarily found in the same zone or district and is not created by an action or actions of the property owner or the applicant. Commissioner Bates? I agree. I agree. I agree. I'm going to disagree with that one because he does have the gravel parking lot, though I understand his hardship there, but, so I disagree. Okay. I agree. Okay. That the granting of the permit for the variance will not adversely affect the rights of adjacent property owners or residences. Commissioner Bates? Agree. 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 That the strict application of the provisions of the development regulations from which the variance is requested will constitute unnecessary hardship upon the property owner represented in the application. Agree. 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 
disagree since financial considerations really aren't a hardship as far as the state statute is concerned. Okay. I agree. Okay. That the variance desired will not adversely affect the public health, safety, morals, order, convenience, prosperity, or general welfare. Agree. 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 And lastly, the granting of the variance desired, desired will not be opposed to the general spirit and intent of the development regulations. Agree. 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 In granting a variance, the board may impose such conditions, safeguards, and restrictions upon the premises benefited by the variance as may be necessary to reduce or minimize any potentially injurious effects of such variances upon other property in the neighborhood and to carry out the general purpose and intent of the development regulations. Are there any such conditions or safeguards that the board wishes to add? Yes. No. <laughs> no. Okay. You want to do it? Well, go ahead. Stay, okay. stay what you want. I would... Because uh, it has to be unanimous. Okay. Um, a condition that if there's further development within the building at this address greater than 1,300 square feet, um, then uh, they would need to come back before the board for an additional parking variance or make that application. All right. You're talking about subletting a person. Or an additional portion or the growth or the they building. grew that building further yeah. into that space anything that was larger than what that is on that corner Yes, they've indicated 1300 square feet of retail space So I think what Kathy is getting at is if there were any publicly accessed retail space beyond 1300 square feet that it would need to mm -hmm. come, come back, back. Mm -hmm. Are we Going to hold them to 1300 or we go because that's the, give them, the current I, that's the current application right. I understand that but the building all right I was just going to say give them up to 1500 just in case there's a, a little bit of growth there because if we don't if we limit them to 1300 feet there's not even an opportunity for a little bit of growth and thereby uh, having them to come back again if there's a, a growth worry, the, uh, the owner requires 1,500 square feet. So you can make the condition based on the square footage or you could say, like we mentioned before, if there was an additional tenant um, in the building. To occupy in, the yeah. space, just you know, kind of whatever the board feels is most appropriate. Would it be better to maybe word it if there's any change, changes other than those conditions which were presented to the board tonight? So I think that'll go along with what Kathy said. If it expanded at all beyond mm -hmm. the 1,300 square feet, and it wouldn't necessarily have to come here. It would just have to go before you guys again. To review mm. it and see if it mm -hmm. yeah. if it still followed the conditions. well the, the variance no the variance you would be making the variance then based on the thirteen hundred square feet that they proposed or that they presented so then if there was any change beyond that it would need to come back to the board. Okay. See we're we're handcuffing the, the uh, then to the, the, you know, the current thirteen hundred square feet. Well, but, but that was their submission. Yeah. Yeah. That's their request. But we can grant them an additional number of square feet. That's our prerogative, isn't it? So you're only talking the difference of maybe one parking space requirement, right? Going from 1,300 to 1,500 square feet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or a half. So if, if we say in excess of eight parking spaces that are required, mm -hmm. would that... So if there's that any allows them to go. So you could say yes. If there's any development that would require parking beyond eight spaces, that would be up to sixteen hundred right. square feet of retail space that it would need to come back to the board. Okay. Would that be more meaningful? I I think so. Okay. That way we don't handcuff I'm uh, I'm good with that. Growth. Okay. Okay. Now, my original comment about having public works look at the striping and all of that, does that need to be added to this, or that's just a comment that 
when you review it and send it to them. We'll, make make we'll sure just, that they have no problem. Yeah, with that. I don't think that needs to be a condition. We'll just make sure they take a second look. Okay. All right. All right. Is board satisfied with that then? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Based on the votes, the request for variance is approved. Number 2022-31522 South 5th Street. Uh, the applicant is requesting a variance from Section 502 of the adopted regulation to allow reduction in required off-street parking. Staff report, please. Um, so the applicant, Henry Fortenbury, is requesting a variance um, from Section 5.02 of the development regulations to allow a reduction in required off-street parking for their retail business located at 522 South 5th Street. No on-street parking is available. The property is currently zoned OBD, Office Business District, and is surrounded by a mix of uses, but primar primarily office uses including a tax office to the north, an office building to the east, State Farm to the south, and a vacant lot to the west. The location is one block south of the Central Business District. Parking for retail uses is required at a rate of one per 200 square feet of space accessible to the public. The applicant has indicated that there will be 600 square feet of public space in the building, resulting in a requirement for three parking spaces. As we discussed in the previous case, Development regulations allow for off-street parking to be reduced by up to 50% for each on-street parking space within 500 feet. There is ample on-street parking within 500 feet of the site to accommodate parking needs generated by the retail shop. After required uh, public notices were um, mailed out, we had one inquiry wanting to know what the use of the building would be and how many parking spaces would be required for that use. Happy to and any, were there any, any questions. And were there any other issues, uh, feedback of your no. response to your? Okay. Okay. This is Tornowski. Yes. Yeah. 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 <coughs> any other questions of the staff report? I do. Was there a previous variance granted for this property at all? No, not for this one. Um, previously, it had been office uses in this building, which complied with the, they, it, they met the OBD um, zoning requirement. Um, it was already non-conforming in terms of having no on-site parking. Mm -hmm. um, that's still required for office uses. But the way the regulations are written is if you have an existing non-conforming use, the actual business can change as long as it's the same type of use. Right. It doesn't have to come into conformance. It's when you change the type of use. So since it was going from a retail to an office, um, there's a few other conditions in there that would trigger it needing to come in, but that's, that's the one that triggered this one. Since it was going from an office um, to a retail, it's a different type of non-conforming use, so that um, requires it to come into conformance. Thank you. Any other questions of the staff? No. Okay, I'd like to open the public hearing. If there's someone who would like to speak, please come up to the podium, state your name. Hello, my name is Katie Affault. I am the owner of the business that is interested in um, occupying that space. My uh, business is Little Stories Boutique. It's a resale boutique for children. Um, we clothe from newborn to juniors and maternity as well. Um, so pretty much through, I would say through high school, if, depending on the size of your junior. Um, but I actually bought, um, first of all, I've always wanted to own a business in Leavenworth since I moved here the very first time. And I bought little, uh, what was formerly Petite Fluer about two years ago. And um, while I, 
I would have done a lot of things differently looking back, um, especially during that time of COVID, which is really an odd time to buy a business. Um, but I, um, it, I rechanged it, kind of made it mine a little bit, um, and I took the current lease. And that has been proving not to be beneficial for the business as a whole. Um, it's just a really difficult time to have a business. I think I've talked around a lot, kind of asked, I've, I've maneuvered as best I can, um, but that is just not um, going to be a sustainable place for my business, and I want the business to be something. Um, so one of the things I'm doing is looking to move. And by moving, I would offer a lot of things for my customers is one of the things I get my biggest complaint is downtown parking. Um, I especially have a hard time with that because I have people that are trying to like haul bags in or boxes or things that are not, you know, and they park across the street or down the road. And I often go and help them, but I also have two little ones that I have in the store with me almost daily. And so it's kind of hard to go help them when I can't see my store door <laughs> um, and I can't follow them around the corner. And so that becomes a challenge. So it would benefit my customers to have parking a little more accessible that I would here than I do currently downtown. Um, and then it would benefit the growth of my business as a whole. It would give me the opportunity, having a lower rent um, would be giving, give me the opportunity to grow the business. I've, I have a million dreams for this business and I'm currently not able to obtain them. And so that's been really hard for me. Um, I know I'm new, and so I'm trying to be patient, but I do have a lot of businesses for the long run, or ideas for the long run. And then it would also in turn help the city. I, 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 this is a need for the city. Um, resale clothing, especially right now, and it's hard on a lot of families. Um, I, it's a need for children go to clothes, and they always need clothes. And so I'm an affordable um, place for people who just want cheap clothing. I'm also, I kind of fit a lot of criteria when I, it comes to people just looking for a steal on clothes or can't afford as expensive clothing as, you know, Legends offers. Um, but, yeah, I want to, that's kind of all I have to say, and I want to thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Any questions? Not at this time. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Anyone else like to speak? If not, I'll close. Okay. Oh. Oh. Ah, ah. I guess that was too fast. Wendy Scheid again, the Lovemore's Main Street Director. So we've worked with Katie much, and um, <clears throat> I understand her desire to grow. Um, <coughs> I'm not sure which building is on the map. So I'm trying to figure that out. But I know there's a adjacent parking lot that the owner has offered through me um, parking there. Uh, and so as we look at the downtown, everything is expanding. It's not just the typical um, Choctaw to Shawnee Broadway to the river anymore. There's several <coughs> other businesses which are bringing property taxes and sales taxes into the city. So we embrace that. Um, Katie runs a, a great shop now, but um, as she mentioned, she just isn't able to the, grow the business as she needed. So she's just right up the street. She'll still be in our Main Street area, and uh, I encourage you to look at that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Well, I think we've tapped everybody that's sitting in the audience, so I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. And any discussion amongst the uh, board members? The uh, Wendy mentioned that there's off-street parking that has been offered. Can you give us an idea where that off-street parking is? Well... Can you show me which building we're talking about of Katie's? What's the number on it? Yeah. Right there. Yes, that one where the roofing 101 was at. Yeah, in Tarnaski before it. Well, Kurt Gilbert from Advantage Printing owns the lot. Wendy, can you come up here so we can get it on? Oh, he right does? Here. Kurt Gilbert owns the lot. Um, he owns the old funeral home, the Belden mm -hmm. Larkin mm -hmm. funeral right. home, and he owns the lot across, um, I guess, Walnut Street. <coughs> so, I 
that's all I can tell you. But there's parking there. Um, mm -hmm. Must have come with his building when he bought it. That's a bit further down, though, isn't it? And isn't that, I can't read that number. No, the other way? It's, isn't that that building? Yeah. It's That's that where Kurt that is. Kurt is yeah, off Oak Street. Very top. So, and then it's that one. Yeah. Isn't that? It's that one right there. He's at 500 Oak. Five, uh, where that yellow car is. 11. Yeah, that's five is that, the dial. Yeah. Someplace. That's Kurt's property. Oh, okay. And so he owns that, uh -huh. probably that parking lot across the street. But that's, you know, a block away from where Katie will be. There's, um, parking is allowed all along 5th Street and along Walnut um, on street parking there. So mm -hmm. right in front of and adjacent to... Um, the business there at 522, there's plenty of on-street parking available. Yeah. So, it, so it, it appears she has at least two or three pla places or spaces along Broadway and probably five to six along Walnut. And then if, you were, if we were to, go, to move north to that dialysis uh, company or that, that therefore paved parking lot, that, that's a rather large capacity lot so I mean doesn't her business then current wouldn't her business currently meet the requirement mm -mm. no because we can only reduce the requirement for on-site parking by up to 50 percent okay for the on-street parking and it has to be adjacent to the within to the 500 feet rate. on the same block and okay. so within 500 feet on this block, since she's on the corner, she's got access to 5th and Walnut Street mm -hmm. parking. Um, there's ample parking on yeah. both streets within 500 feet. Okay, thank you. But that is good to know that she has some flexibility if she wants to have a sale. And mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. she has places for special events or something that she has access to from adjacent property owners. Okay. Parking lot sale. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll have to knock just some more buildings down and make more parking lots. No, that's what they did in the 70s when I was down there. <laughs> okay. A request for a variance may be granted upon a finding of the board that all the following conditions have been met. The board shall make a determination on each condition, and the findings shall be entered into the record. That the variance requested arises from such condition which is unique to the property in question and is not ordinarily found in the same zone or district and is not created by an action or actions of the property owner or the applicant. Let's, uh, Commissioner Horvath, let's start to the right this time. Sir. I vote yes. Agree. Agree. I agree. I'll be abstaining on this as I have conflict. Uh, okay. I assume that means for all votes, so you want yes, to Yes, thank you. That. Okay. <laughs> that the granting of the permit for the variance will not be ad will not adversely affect the rights of adjacent property owners or residences. Yes. I agree. 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 That the strict application of the provisions of the development regulations from which the variance is requested will constitute unnecessary hardship upon the property owner represented in the application. Yes. I agree. 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 That the variance desired will not adversely affect the public health, safety, morals, order, convenience, prosperity, or general welfare. Yes. I agree. 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 And lastly, the granting of the variance desired will not be opposed to the general spirit and intent of the development regulations. Yes. I agree. I agree. Okay. In granting a variance, the board may impose such conditions, safeguards, and restrictions upon the premises benefited by the variance as may be necessary to reduce or minimize any potentially injurious effect of such variance upon other property in the neighborhood and to carry out the general purpose and intent of these development regulations. 
Are there any? No. No. All right. No conditions. So based on the vote count, it, the variance is approved with no conditions or safeguards. Any other business? No. Do I have a motion to adjourn? What do we have next month? We do have one item for next month. Sure, I make it. Mm, pardon me. Not right around Christmas, is it? <laughs> no, New Year's <laughs> or Christmas Eve. The 17th? Is it the 17th? Yes, it would be the week before Christmas. Or the 19th? Is that part of your Christmas? The 19th. The 19th, 19th. yeah. So that full week before Christmas. We'll see him in Omaha. Well, that's all right. Hmm? Yeah, that's right. you can handle it. Yeah. So we'll send out, Michelle will send out an email since it's around a holiday. We'll go and send out an email this week just to see if we're going to have a quorum or not so we know on advance. Send early email. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just with that being the week before Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Some it doesn't have me. to be tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and Michelle is going to provide eggnog, right? What? Eggnog. eggnog. May yes. After the meeting, I <laughs> really enjoy my eggnog. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a fun uh, meeting. Yeah, ready for one of those. Yeah. All right. And I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. Sure, I, I make such a motion. And a second. Second. Motion and second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Look forward to the re-grand opening, Katie. Thank you all very much, and good luck to you guys.